All right, today's project is a little bit longer than projects that we usually do. There's quite a lot that we're going to learn about different types of brushes as we go through this assignment. You want to start by downloading the files. We've got three bitlys, bit.ly slash umbrella dash start, bit.ly slash umbrella dash texture, and bit.ly slash umbrella dash flower. Get those three files downloaded, get them opened up in Photoshop and then come on back and we'll get started. All right, so first of all, let's look at your layers panel. Um, there are two folders in your layers panel. One is called Umbrella. It's spelled wrong. I've never fixed it. Uh, I didn't make this assignment. I got it out of a tutorial uh, book a long time ago, and um, it's always been spelled wrong, and I never fixed it. So there's that story. Now open up the tree folder. It's probably already open for you, but if it's not, click the little triangle next to the folder, and it'll open up. Now, I call this a folder because it looks like a folder. Photoshop calls it a group. To make a group, down at the bottom is a little picture of a folder. You click that, it'll make a new group, and it's a way for you to organize layers. Once you start getting 10, 20, 50, 75 different layers, it starts to get really hard to scroll up, 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 and down, down, down in the layers panel to find what you want. So grouping them in uh, folders that make sense is the way to go, and that's the way this assignment is set up. Start by clicking on the outline layer. First, I want you to turn the outline layer's visibility off. It's this little eyeball right here to the left of the thumbnail. You turn that off, you'll see that underneath it is this bark layer where uh, somebody has already been nice enough to paint this tree in for us. So that's cool. You can turn the outline layer back on, and you see that we can't see the painting because of the white background of this drawing of the outline of the tree. Now, the cool thing about this is that it's a really easy fix. And anytime you've got line art like this, um, either you download it or you draw something and you scan it in and you open it up, um, you get the outline in a top layer, black and white, and you just change the blend mode. So go ahead and do this now. Go to your blend mode menu, change normal to multiply. The upshot of the multiply blend mode is that the white becomes transparent to any layers underneath it. And uh, so the color is the only thing that is left showing through. So the black lines add this really nice definition to your uh, tree. And then the, uh, the bark, which has already been painted in, just shows through. And the white becomes invisible. Easy as that. Now come on down here to the bottom of the layers panel and make a new layer. To make a new layer, you're looking at this little sticky note looking icon right here next to the trash can. Go ahead and click that one time. Let's make a new layer and let's call our new layer grass. Just like that. This is what we're going to paint. You guessed it. We're going to paint some grass. So the first thing we're going to do to paint this grass is to go over here to our paintbrush tool. The shortcut for the brush tool is the letter B. If you just type B, it'll jump right to your brush tool. If you click and hold on it, you'll see that there are four tools, the brush, the pencil, the color replacement, the mixer. The only one that we're going to be using today is this first tool here called the brush tool. And then up at the top is a menu that has a whole bunch of different brushes in it. Your menu is probably smaller, about this big, when you open it up. If you want to see more brushes at a time, you go to the bottom right-hand corner here, and you pull this little corner out with these little dots in it, and it can show you a lot more of your brushes that you have. Okay, So we want to open that up. We want to scroll down just a little bit down your list of your default brushes, and you will see um, two grass brushes and then a, a few leaf brushes there. And if you mouse over the brushes, the name pops up. Dune grass, grass, scattered maple leaves, scattered leaves. You want the one called dune grass. It's got 112 underneath it. That's the size of the brush in pixels, 112 pixels. Click on that to select it. And then up at the top, the size of this brush is a bit too large. Go ahead and highlight that 112 and type 60, 60 for the size of your brush. And then let's just double check your settings before we go to paint. Make sure your mode here is set to normal. Make sure your opacity and your flow are both set to 100%. If you've got your dune grass brush set to 60, mode is normal, opacity and flow are 100%. You got a new blank layer here called grass. We're almost ready to paint. We just need a new color. So there's a few different ways to make colors in Photoshop. The first way I wanna do is over here. There's your foreground color and your background color. These two colored squares at the bottom of your toolbox. 
Okay, we want to change the foreground color by clicking on this front square one time. It'll open up your color picker. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can mix colors in the color picker. Up until now, you've probably just chosen a color kind of by eyeballing it and kind of clicking around and finding a color and a hue that, and a shade that you like. But for this one, I have a very specific mix of red, green, and blue that we want to put in, okay? So go right here to the R, that's your red, and put in this number, 230. Red, 230. And then go to the G, that's your green setting, and put in 235. And then go to the B, that's your blue setting, and put in 171. Now be careful, there's another B up here. Um, and that's not the one that you want, okay? We want red 230, green 235, blue 171, just like that. All right, and that'll give you the three settings, and it creates this pale yellow color right here. And once you get that pale yellow color, go ahead and click OK. Now, we're going to mix this pale yellow color with white. Double check that your background color is set to white. If it's not, go ahead and click on that background color and drag your mouse all the way up here to the upper right hand corner and set your background color to white. And then click OK. And now you've got this pale yellow color for your foreground color and your background color white. We're in this new layer here called grass. And we're going to paint. And what this grass brush does, it's got a preset where it mixes these two colors, the foreground color and the background color. Go ahead and paint a hillside, click and drag, and you'll see the, the yellow and the white mixed together. Just click and drag and make kind of a hillside here of grass. Just like that. Click and drag, get some nice lush grass growing right down this hillside here like that. Now, once you got that, you might think to yourself, uh, that is not very pretty grass. And it's not. It looks pretty dead. But we are going to do some blending where we build up some colors, which will give us some really nice layering effects. So we're going to make a new color now. We got this put in. We're going to go and click on the foreground color again to open up a new color picker. And here's the new RGB color mix. This time, set your R to 186. Set your green to 196. Now, you see I'm not taking my mouse and clicking down uh, in the next uh, little window there. I'm hitting tab on my keyboard. If I hit tab, it'll jump right to it. That's a good one, as we're going to be putting in a lot more colors. You put in the number, hit tab, it'll jump to the next one. Put in the number, hit tab, it jumps to the next one. So we want the B, the blue, to be set to 93. 186, 196, 93. And you get kind of an olive green color, which also doesn't look very healthy, but you'll see what happens. Go ahead and click OK. Now, before you start painting with that, we need to make a couple changes up top here. Keep your brush the same. No problem there, 60. But your mode, change it from normal to multiply. Now, we already changed the blend mode to multiply today with that outline layer, but that was down here. That's the blend mode for a layer. This is the blend mode for the brush. Okay, the layer is going to stay normal, but up top here, we're set to multiply, which means anything that we paint with this brush is going to multiply with whatever is already in that layer. And then we don't want it to be too harsh. Take your opacity down to 50, 50% 50 opacity on that brush. Multiply blend mode, 50% opacity, leave your flow at 100%. And then come down here and paint with your brush. And you paint once over that hillside, and there's those two colors. That's not very exciting. But when you load up on your mouse, that multiply resets. And because multiply has the effect of darkening when it blends, the second swap, swap, swipe, Mm -hmm. The second time through, it darkens up. And if you let up in your mouse and you go over it again, it's a little bit darker. And each time you build up, you create some really nice layering. You get some uh, some of the 
yellow still shows through. You see the tips of the grass there doesn't blend. Uh, they don't blend much at all. And paint it as much as you want. The more you paint it, the darker it's going to get. You can go too far with it, and it'll start to almost look black. You don't want that. But we're just adding some, you know, some miracle grow, some some fertilizer here, and uh, making this lawn look a lot more healthy. Okay, that's good. And we should save. If you haven't saved your file yet, go ahead and go to File save or save as probably because you want to call it umbrella and you want to add your name to it get that saved in your personal drive all right save it as umbrella your name get that file saved all right we're ready to move on to the next step now we're actually done in the tree folder click the little triangle next to the folder it'll close it right up and open the umbrella folder you see there are five layers here in the umbrella folder. Two of them are turned off. Um, just look at how this is set up. If you turn off the frame, you can see the frame there. Um, turn off the underpainting, that's your umbrella. You can see that uh, this poor person is actually not even a person. They're chopped off right there. And go ahead and turn all of those layers back on. So you got all five layers turned on. And click on the wet, dark blue layer. That's the layer that we want to be in to paint in now wet dark blue all right and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a couple colors and i want to show you a different way to mix those colors over here you see up in the upper right hand corner you've got your color panel and you've got a swatches panel and these two things are connected if for some reason you don't have color or swatches up here uh, go to the window menu and you can open up uh, color here or swatches here but they should be right up here in the upper right hand corner for you and click on color and you see there's that rgb mix just like we had in our color picker and you do it the same way go ahead and click on the red and we're going to get those three colors the red is 150 150 hit tab it'll jump you down to green 193 for the green and then hit tab and the blue is 219 150 193 219 Okay, that's your color mix. Gives you kind of a nice light blue color there. And then we're going to be using this color a few times. Now, I'm just going to paint with it and move on. We're going to come back to it. So I want to save this color so I don't have to keep typing these numbers in all the time. So click over here on swatches. Swatches is kind of like your uh, coloring box, your Crayola crayons, where all your colors kind of hang out. You can go and you can click on them anytime you want and paint with them. Down here, you can see I've done this assignment a couple times with my Photoshop classes. You can add your color to the swatches. You just come down here to the last row where it's gray, and your uh, mouse will turn into a paint bucket. And you can see right there it says click to create a new swatch. You also, if, if you can't quite get your mouse to turn into a paint bucket, the little sticky note down here next to the trash can, that'll do the same thing. Click there, and it'll make a new swatch. Either way, click and it says what name do you want to give it okay probably give it a name that makes sense if you're working on a particular project name it what it is if it's a logo color name it the name of the product and the logo that you're going to uh, use the color with um, in our case this is just a light blue color you could call it light blue um, you can really give it any name you want you could call it um, you know dennis and click ok and then it adds your swatch right there to the end of your swatches. And if you mouse over it, it'll tell you the name of that color. Probably Dennis is not a great name for my color. It's not very descriptive. But now we got a second one. Go back to the color uh, palette. Click on that. And I got another color mix for you. This one is red 132. Hit tab. 143. Tab. 199. 132, 143, 199. That's kind of a, I don't know what I'd call that, lavender, periwinkle. I'm not sure what we would call that color, but let's come over to swatches and add that to our swatches as well. Go right here, click, and give it a name. Um, periwinkle, maybe. Okay, now you got these two swatches, and you're going to be ready to paint with those when we get around to painting our colors. Now we need our brushes. You can see here that the people that made this assignment painted um, almost all of the umbrella, but they left three panels right here unpainted for us to finish up. 
and they painted with a kind of a watercolor looking brush. It looks kind of, you know, kind of wet, um, like it's kind of soaked into the umbrella here. And if we go to our brushes menu, go ahead, go up here to your brushes menu up at the top, you'll see that um, if you were to go through and look at all these, we don't have a watercolor brush. We need to add one. I'm actually going to reset my brushes so that it looks more like your set of brushes. There we go. This is what yours probably looks like. And um, I'm going to add a new brush library and get a watercolor brush. So the way you do that is you go right here to the upper right-hand corner of this brush menu. There's a gear. Click on that gear. Uh, a brush um, menu pops up, and there's a whole bunch of settings for your brush panel. And this panel menu, just like a lot of panel menus, has at the end of it libraries. So look at these libraries. Here's a whole bunch of different ones. This would be fun to play with sometime. Load some libraries and see what these different brushes do, especially assorted brushes. That's got some really fun ones in it. Special effect brushes has a couple cool ones too. But I want you to go down to wet media brushes. And I want to warn you, don't click anything yet. Go to wet, wet media brushes and wait. Do not click OK. If you click OK, look what it says. Replace your current brushes, all the brushes that you use kind of all the time. Do you want to replace those with these, whatever they are, 12 brushes? No, you don't want to do that. You want to append, which means put these 12 brushes at the end of my list. Okay, so go ahead and hit append. And you can see there, if you scroll down, now there's your new brushes. Well, that's more than 12, but still, you didn't want to get rid of your old brushes. You just wanted to add these to the end of this list. If you mouse over, you can see here's scattered dry brush, large texture stroke, watercolor, heavy loaded. They've got some fun names. Oil, oil medium. And if you go to the very last one, mouse over it, you see it's called watercolor light opacity. That's the brush that you want to click on. It's got a 42 under it, but... A few of them have 42. So make sure you're on the very last one. You mouse over it, watercolor light opacity. Click on that brush. The size is 42. Let's change that. Change the 42 to 25. All right. Watercolor light opacity. Change the size from 42 to 25. Change your mode from multiply back to normal. We don't want it to darken up when we paint. Normal. And opacity from 50. To 15, 1, 5. Really light opacity. And you're already, I believe, in the wet, dark blue layer. Make sure you are. And we're about ready to paint. Look at the way they've painted. They kind of line up along this the edges of this frame. So the people that made this assignment did a cool thing for us. We don't have to try to select these panels. They've already done it for us. Go to the Select menu up at the top and pull down to Load Selection. Select menu, load selection. You do that, and it pops up with the load selection dialog box, and go to this channel menu. There are four alpha channels where they have already pre-selected for us parts of the uh, picture. So select alpha one, and click OK. The alpha one channel, look at that. It loads this panel up real nicely, just like that. Now, here's what you paint. I'll show you here. I'll zoom in some. You go over to your swatches. You click on the light blue. And you come and you look at the way they did it. You know, they kind of tried to, they kind of blobbed up around the edges here a little bit. So I'm going to click and drag, let up on my mouse, click and drag, click and drag. And I'm just painting little, like, blobs of this light blue color. Okay? The more I paint over an area, the more uh, blobby it's going to look. And if you're painting and you're like, this isn't working, it, it probably is. It just, um, it's really light. 15% doesn't show up much. It's going to show up a lot more when we do the next step. So after you've added some of that light blue color in, go to your darker kind of purpley color, grab that, and then do the same thing. Go right around the edges. I'm clicking and dragging, clicking and dragging, clicking and dragging, and just kind of going around the edges and darkening it up. And you just are trying to make it kind of match these other panels, okay? And uh, once you got something you think looks pretty nice, I might have gone a little overboard there while I was demonstrating. Once you get something that looks nice, go to Select and Load Selection and load that Alpha 2. 
do the same thing. Go to your light blue, build up the light blue a little bit here. Click, click, click. And then go to the other color and darken it up a little bit. And then one more, select load alpha three. Same thing, take that light blue color, click around there, and then get that purpley color and click just like that. Okay. So that's it. When you get that one done, go ahead and deselect, control D to deselect. We'll do, be doing alpha four later in the assignment. Okay. So, so far, we have used an existing brush, changed the size of it, but pretty much just kept it as is. And we've loaded a new brush by loading a brush library. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take an existing brush and we're going to modify it. So go to your brush menu and then scroll up a little bit to uh, back where the dune grass brush was. And you'll see there's a maple leaf. If you mouse over it, you'll see that the brush is called scattered maple leaves. That's the one you want. Now, if you, back when we loaded a library, if you did this, if you loaded that library and you clicked OK, and it replaced all your brushes with just the wet media brushes, and now you don't have your maple leaf, you can reset. You go to the gear, and you go to reset brushes. It says, do you want to replace? Yep. And if it says, do you want to save them? Say no. And then you're back. These are your normal settings for your brushes and then go to that scattered maple leaves brush. It's got a 74 underneath it. First thing, change the size from 74 to 65. And then change, your mode should be normal. Change your opacity, bring it back up to 100%. All right, so scattered maple leaves brush, 65, normal, 100%. And then if I were to paint right now, I would get this. I'd get some leaves and they would quickly just kind of cover up the whole of everything, okay? And you can see that whatever my color is, they kind of come in that color with some slight variations. I don't want that. We're going to make some changes. We want to open up a thing called the brush panel. Go to the window menu up at the top here and pull down to brush. Window, brush. There's our brush panel over here on the right. And there's a whole bunch of different settings, all of which can be edited. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to make some changes to those settings. All right, so let's go through it. So it starts with brush tip shape. We're going to leave that alone. We've already changed the size. We don't need to change the spacing. Click on the words, shape dynamics. Okay, don't do anything with the check mark. Just click right on the words. And you get these settings here. The first setting we're going to change is this control. Under size jitter, we're going to change the control. It's set to pen pressure, which means that if you're using uh, a graphic pen, if you had a tablet and you pushed hard with the pen, you get a whole bunch of leaves. If you press real lightly, you get a few leaves. Um, and uh, we don't have pens. We're just using the mouse. So change the control from pen pressure to fade. When you make that change, you see your little preview down here. It showed a big blob of leaves. Now it just shows one leaf and then a little tiny leaf. That's that fade set to one leaf. Change the one to 50 right here. Control, fade. 50. All right. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, we can call all this good. These settings are fine. Click on the word scattering over here on the left. The scatter is a lot. Let's take this scatter down from 449% to 265. You see the preview here. We'll kind of tighten up around this middle line. And then the big one is change the count right here from four to one. Bring the count for your scatter to one. There we go. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for some leaves that kind of look like they're just blowing in a line, blown by the wind. And then uh, you're good. You can leave everything else the, the, the way it is. And we're getting close. It's a couple more things we need to do. Um, before we paint, first of all, we want the leaves to kind of blow right out of the frame of the picture. But there's nothing out of the frame of the picture to paint on. We're going to add some canvas to do that. Go to your image menu and pull down to canvas size. Image right here. 
canvas size. And we need to put in our new settings. Now, very important here, change your inches to pixels. If you don't change this to pixels, you're going to create a gigantic file. It'll probably crash your computer. So make sure you change inches to pixels. And it'll, when you change one, it'll change both of them. And here's the new setting, 580 pixels for the width and 440 pixels for the height. 580 pixels, not inches, 440 pixels. And before you click OK, come down here. Make sure this little color chip is set to white. If it is not, if you've got a different color for your background, this will be a different color. It should be white. But if it's not, you can click this menu here, and you can choose white for your canvas extension color, and then click OK. If you did it right, you get this nice little border going right around the outside. All right, now we're going to paint in a new layer. Come over to your layers, just like we did for the grass. Make a new blank layer. Call this new layer, you guessed it, leaves. New blank layer to paint in. Call it leaves. And then we're going to mix our new color. So you can come to your color panel here, or you can click on your foreground color and go to the color picker. Here's the RGB mix, R185. Hit tab. Green is 141. Hit tab. Blue is 59. 185, 141, 59. And in this leaves layer, you're going to paint leaves that kind of blow up out of the frame, back into it, and then out the right side. And it's one motion, click and drag. I'm going to go up and then out. Watch. Click and drag. Whoosh. Just like that. If you don't like that, just hit undo. Control Z. Try again. The scattering and the size jitter and all those things are going to make it random. It's going to look different every time. So you can do Control Z. You can try it again. Ooh, that one's kind of good. I like that. That's nice. Okay, so you figure out what you want to do there and just kind of make the leaves blowing out of the picture just like that. All right. And when you've got that, we haven't saved in a while. You should go to File, Save Your File. All right. Looking good. Way to go. We're ready to move on to the next step. This one is my favorite part of the assignment. If you haven't already opened it, go to File, Open, and open up the file that you downloaded called Flower. There it is right there. We're going to turn this flower into a paintbrush. And it's already been set up really nicely for us. One thing that makes a uh, brush, uh, a, a photo, look really nice as a brush is it is it cut out. You don't want to have a square-shaped brush. That just looks weird. Um, so they've already cut out this flower for us. The other thing that's helpful is to make it black and white. You don't have to make it black and white. But if you do make it black and white, you can adjust the darkness. And if you get the picture kind of darker, like you could come to your, you don't have to do this, but um, you could go to your like levels or your curves, and you could darken it up. The darker it is, the more uh, ink is going to um, get painted. The darker it is, the more solid the paint is going to be when you paint with it. So don't worry about that. I just want you to see it's pretty light, which means it's going to be kind of a little see-through when we paint with it. And uh, it's really easy to turn it into a brush. You just go to your Edit menu, and you pull down to Define Brush Preset. And it says, what do you want to call this brush? You can just call it flowers. You can call it, you know, um, you know, whatever, whatever makes sense to you. And then click OK. And look at that. If you're on your brush tool right now, it just turned into a flower. Neat. Close this up. Go back to your umbrella file. Now we've made a brush out of a flower. Now if we were to paint with it right now, it would not be very attractive okay just kind of a flower shaped blob so we're going to make some changes and make this flower a little more attractive so we're going to go back to that brush panel now you should have a little button over here in your dock where you could click on this little cup with the brushes in it little picture and it'll open up your brush or same way we did before window brush or if you like shortcuts f5 however you do it let's get into this brush panel here and start right up at the top Click on Brush Tip Shape. All right. Here comes our settings. Start by changing the size. Right here in the middle, 
Change the size of our brush, bring it down to 25. And then the spacing down here, turn the spacing up to 80%. Okay, if you got it right, it should look sort of like a lei, you know, like those Hawaiian flower necklaces. And then let's look at shape dynamics. When you turn on your shape dynamics, you see the flowers get all squished out because of things like the roundness jitter and the size jitter. I want you to change under size jitter, I want you to change control to off. Okay, that's gonna make it so instead of giving you 50 leaves like this one did with the with the uh, leaves that kind of faded out, um, change control to off and when you paint, you're just gonna paint flowers all day long. It's not, they won't stop. The more you click and drag, the more flowers you're gonna get, okay? And um, as long as these aren't all set to zero, you're fine, you can leave them. My angle jitter is set to 100, roundness jitter 50-ish, it doesn't matter. You know, the, whatever it's set to is probably gonna look just fine for you. Click on the word scattering. We wanna pump the scatter up. Scatter, change that 265 to 500. Okay, and you'll see the flowers start to space out in our little preview here. Leave the count at one, leave the count jitter at 98%. And then we wanna do one more thing, color dynamics. Click on color dynamics. Your hue jitter is probably set to 13 that, because that's the last thing we did. These uh, leaves were set to 13. Um, and, and that's, let's pump it up just a little bit. You know, not much. Let's push the, uh, the hue uh, to 15%. Saturation, brightness, purity, zero, zero, zero. Foreground, background, zero. And let me show you how to save a brush. At the bottom of the brush panel, there's this little sticky note. It looks like the new layer icon. Okay, if you mouse over it, you see here it says create new brush. Click that. And just like when you made your brush for your flower uh, just a second ago, it says, what do you want to call it? Um, and you can call it, you know, um, whatever you want. Um, and you can click OK. And that'll save your brush so that if later on you want to use it, it'll still be there. The leaves that we made, all those settings, those are gone. We, we painted with it one time, and then we moved on. And now if we wanted to paint with it again, we'd have to go put those settings all back in again. So um, you can save a brush if you know you're going to paint with it more than one time. Just click the little sticky note and save it. Okay, this is set. You can close up the brush panel by clicking this little double arrow here. It'll close up. We need to make a new layer to paint in. So come on down here to the bottom of the layers panel. Click that sticky note to make a new layer. Call the new layer flowers. You knew I was going to say that. And let's pick a color. Right now it's this dingy, you know, kind of rust color. Let's go to swatches. Click the very first color in your swatches, that RGB red. Click that bright red color we're going to paint with. And before you paint, because it's supposed to be, this is going to be a pattern on our umbrella. And before we paint that pattern, go to Select, Load Selection, and Load Alpha 4 Channel, that last channel. Click OK. Alpha 4 is the whole umbrella. Double check that you're in the flowers layer, a new blank layer. This is important that you're in a separate layer for this. And then just click and drag. Get some pretty flowers. Let up and click somewhere else and kind of come around. You can't really control exactly where the flowers go because it's random. The scattering and the size jitter and everything is random. But just kind of click and drag a little bit. Get this nice little pattern on the fabric of this umbrella. And you can deselect Control D. Now, this is a little intense. Let's try and make it look a little bit more like it really is a part of that umbrella. Come on over here to your layers. The nice thing about painting in layers, and the reason you had to have the flowers in a separate layer for this, is that once you've got something painted in a separate layer, you can do things like blend mode. Click on your blend mode, change it from normal to multiply. Now, they're not as bright, but they do kind of attach to that watercolor. Looks nice. And then change the opacity from 100 down to like 75, somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 opacity. Yeah, looks nice. Save it. Save your file. All right. Home stretch, guys. We're almost there. Go ahead and go to open and open up the file called 
texture that you downloaded. Now this texture file is teeny. It's this itty bitty little texture file, which is not what we want. We want uh, this to be the mat for our painting. Now it's got kind of a cool abstract color scheme to it, but um, we need to be a lot bigger. If we just went and, and blew it up, it would get all pixelated, um, but that's actually what we're gonna do. We're just gonna blow it up. Um, it's not ideal, but I'll show you a way to make it look not so pixelated if you have to blow something up. We're lucky because this is abstract and it won't really matter. You know, it's not like it's a face or anything like that. Um, I'll show you a trick. So here's what we want to do. Um, go to image and pull down to image size. And if you change this number, this number will automatically change width and height. I don't want it to do that this time. I don't want it to be proportional. I'm going to kind of mess it up. So uncheck this little thing here that says constrained proportions. Uncheck that. And you see the little link goes away. All right. So we went to image, image size. We turned off constrained proportions. And here's the new size. Width, 780. Height, 580. Width, 780. Height, 580. You don't have to worry about down here. This is already uh, changed for you. And then click OK. 780 by 580. Now it's much bigger, but look at all those pixels. Not cute. So we're going to use a filter to kind of help uh, make this look a little bit smoother. Go to your filter menu. Pull down to blur. And then go over and down to the bottom of that blur menu to surface blur. Filter blur, surface blur. Okay, you got your default settings here that we can play around with. We're playing around with the radius and the threshold. Okay, as you change them, you can see you, know, you get some different looks and find something that you are kind of happy with. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make the pixelated, you know, the little dots and stuff go away. Um, and you don't want it to look super blurry either. Okay, so we're just kind of looking at some some combinations of radius and threshold. And I'm kind of thinking 10 for the radius and 5 for the threshold. 10 radius, 5 threshold. Looks kind of like what I'm looking for. That's nice. It's got kind of a water, it's got that same watercolor vibe, but we've taken out all the pixelated uh, things that happened when we blew it up. Okay, click OK on surface blur. Radius 10, threshold 5. There we go. Now leave that here for a second. Come back over to your umbrella file. We need to get this whole file over to our texture. This is going to be our mat. You get the whole thing over. If you just took the pen, the uh, move tool right now and tried to drag it, whoops, the only thing that would go is that one layer, your flower layer. So we don't want to do that. We want to bring the whole thing over. Now we can squish all the layers together, and then we'll be able to drag it at once. But we've spent a lot of time getting all of these things put together in one big old uh, file with all these layers and protecting all the different layers. And I don't want to lose that. If I want to come back later and change the grass, I can easily just come in, go to the grass layer, and say, OK, grass, go away. Let's put something else in here. I don't want to lose all that work. So I'm going to do this. Go to your image menu and pull down to duplicate. Image, duplicate. And it's going to make a complete copy of this file. Instead of the word copy, put in flat, just to help us keep track of it. Just change the name of your file, umbrella your name that you've already got. Instead of copy, put flat and click OK. And open up a new tab. Now, the, right now, this tab and this tab are exactly the same, except this one's called flat. But come over here to your Layers panel. And in your Layers panel now, you can flatten it. You go to your Layers panel menu. It's this little, uh, in the upper right-hand corner, there's these three lines, a little triangle underneath it. Click that. And then in this panel menu, choose Flatten Image right there. And it'll squish them all together into one layer. Now, if you get a message when you do go to Flatten, if it says Discard Hidden Layers, 
No, you don't want to do that. Hit cancel. You should have all your layers turned on. So if when you go to flatten, um, you see uh, something is not turned on, cancel out of the flatten, go turn all the layers on, and then come back up here and say flatten image. It'll squish it all down into one background layer. And now we're ready to take this flattened image over to our texture. Get your move tool. Click and hold on this image. Click and hold. Drag, 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 drag. Up to the tab. Don't let up on the mouse. Drag, 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 drag down. Don't let up on the mouse. Hold down shift. When you hold down shift with your left hand, now let up on the mouse with your right hand, and it'll drop your picture right in the middle of the file. Now, if you didn't hold shift or something happened where you dragged it over and it's off, just, you know, move it over. You can kind of eyeball it and center it out. But holding shift is really nice. It'll drop it right in the middle there for you. And this is the very last step. You are so close to being done. This painting is supposed to be behind this mat, right? This is supposed to be like that little piece of, you know, like, uh, you know, cardboard or whatever that they put over the painting before they frame it. But it doesn't look like it's behind it. We can do this real easy. Over in your layers panel, go to the bottom of the layers panel to your layer styles menu, the little FX uh, button down here, and choose this one, inner shadow. Click on inner shadow, and look at that. And you don't even have to make any changes here. You can look and see, you can play around with these if you want to, but the default 505 looks really nice. And then go ahead and click OK. And look at that. It looks like it's right behind now this. It's so cute. All right. Now, this is the one I want you to hand in. You already have one called Umbrella Your Name. This one, I want you to go to File, Save As, and call it Umbrella Final Your Name. And save this one. And that's the one I want you to hand in. Umbrella final. That's the whole thing done, ready to hand in. You're a champ. This was a long assignment. Way to go. See you next time.